What are you boycotting till the day you die? This gas station on Valley Road in Montclair across from Alexis Steakhouse that didn't let me use their bathroom. And I poo my pants. Shaw Academy. Sleazy little FS. Their lies in advertising, and nearly impossible to cancel a subscription with them. Tried doing a course that was, a free four-week course. The course was free for the first four weeks but the way they sold it was that the course itself was four weeks and free. They say you can finish a course as fast or long as you want, but I think it caps out at three lessons a week making you stay in the program for a few months, paying monthly. Trying to cancel is a nightmare. Sifting through pages and pages of, are you sure you want to cancel? Here's a 5% discount, fill this form out, now this one, and now this one. All to get to a phone number that is only valid to call for a couple hours a day. When you finally get to call, it's an automated message. 10 minutes of a robot telling me it cares about me and wants me to stay. Only to finally press 2 to cancel my subscription. F. Shaw Academy. Edit. Spelling. Yes. And the one-click purchases, I accidentally clicked to find more information and ended up spending $80 on a toolkit I didn't want. And then when you finally finish the course you have to pay another $90 if you actually want the diploma. StubHub. The way they handled the pandemic with changing their policies in peak pandemic so people could only recover credit or resell their tickets instead of receiving cash for cancelled events was ridiculous. I was forced to hold my Coachella ticket for two years, then they decided to refund everyone this year when they realized they would make more money since the ticket prices will surge when the event is back in 2023. F StubHub. Expedia and all the sites they own, control. Which is a lot of them. Expedia screwed me over in a bad way, and then their customer service people insulted me when I tried to call attention to the serious issues. Ultimately, they offered me a gift card as a take it or leave it solution to the entire issue. I left it, and went on a crusade to slam them on Twitter. I did it for a long time but got bored. The issue? Their website let someone use my email address to buy plane tickets. The person didn't need my PW, and I believe they just made a typo that resulted in amusing my email address in a required field. When I got an email confirmation about my airline tickets, I called to say it was wrong. Expedia cancelled the tickets and called it settled. When the actual customer arrived at the airport and their tickets were cancelled, they called Expedia. The rep from Expedia told them I cancelled their ticket, and then gave this angry person asterisk my full name asterisk and asterisk asterisk my cell phone hash asterisk asterisk so that he and I could sort it out between the two of us. The guy was pissed and made vague threats, so I contacted Expedia customer service to get this addressed. When I refused their offer of a $50 Expedia gift card, they told me I could suck a soft DK or a throbbing hard cock, my choice. I declined to do either, and we parted ways forever. The end. What the F? Surely it's an illegal breach of privacy for them to give out your number like that? It must have been, but I wasn't going to hire a lawyer and sue over it. Even if I won, it would be a pain in the DK for minimal cash and the lawyers would get most of it. I settled for petty online revenge, but my time is valuable and that got old after a few years. Anything that even has a hint of MLM. Stop exploiting your personal relationships out of greed. Edit. MLM stands for multi-level marketing, pyramid schemes. Moms. Losing. Money. Edit. Thank you. Reddit. It's been a long while since I've had a 1000 plus comment. I don't want to sound ungrateful but it's kind of odd. I post a well thought out comment lending some real insight or information to the discussion AAAAAND nada. Not a single upvote. I post a silly response AAAAAND it blows up. Nestle. I may inadvertently grab one of its products but when I see the name, I always put it back. Harvey Norman, they have terrible customer service and they took a whole lot of Australian government money that they didn't deserve and are refusing to give it back. Once upon a time when internet shopping was new and novel, a lot of people didn't trust it because they were afraid of providing their credit card details to the World Wide Web. It was a time when you were told don't tell anyone online your name and where you live. However, Slowly people started to adopt to buying things online as they saw the convenience of being able to make purchases and get those items delivered. More websites began getting into the online shopping space and internet shopping started to gain momentum. People realized they could buy things online and even with the currency conversion and shipping fees, 
it still worked out cheaper than buying in a traditional brick and mortar store. That's how much we were getting ripped off in Australia. The main drawback was back then there were long shipping times. Jerry Harvey, the multi-billionaire, started to whinge and complain that online shopping was hurting his business. He had it good for decades ripping off the Aussie consumer, and with the advent of internet shopping, he could see his profits start to decline. He said its bullpoo consumers have a choice to purchase online and that there could be warranty issues or fake products or whatever crap that spewed out of his mouth. Every Christmas period he would go on television and complain if sales had decreased from the previous holiday season or if there was only a slight increase in sales. If sales were good that year, he would be happy and say spending is up. At the time goods and services tax was exempt for online purchases from overseas, as if the total was below 1k. One day Jerry Harvey the rat bastard decides to lobby the Australian government to reduce that threshold to $300 and says Australian businesses can't compete with overseas retailers. Somehow buying an item online, paying currency conversion fees and international shipping still ends up cheaper, yet Australian consumers aren't being ripped off. There's much public backlash to the f wit Jerry Harvey's proposal. Politicians scrap the idea. Jerry complains and whinges and whines. Years later he lobbies the government again. However, this time not to reduce the threshold to $300, but he wants all purchases from overseas to be liable for the GST. Somehow, this passes. Not sure how many bribes he had to make in order to have that happen, but there you go. This is the same DK head that told everyone to spend their $900 GFC stimulus money on plasma screens in his stores. Every time that you make a purchase online from overseas and it's more expensive by 10%, you can thank your multi-billionaire friend, Jerry Harvey. How much more money does the greedy piece if poo want? I will never buy anything from a Harvey Norman store ever again. I know people that pay more for an item to avoid buying from there. I probably wouldn't piss on Jerry Harvey if he was on fire. Susan G. Komen Foundation, they employ alphabet soup and lawyer speak to defraud millions. Note, they do not fund research nor do they help patients. They are an advertising company. They advertise cancer awareness, because someone may be unaware of cancer, s. Mad, same as Komen, they promote anti-drunk driving awareness. This is why I tell people to donate to research companies rather than awareness scams. Comcast. Wish I had the option to use anyone else. Edit. People I know Starlink is a thing. Paying twice as much per month with a huge setup fee for internet that has even more frequent outages is not exactly a good decision. Not to mention it's not even an option since I live in a huge apartment building. FedEx, as much as I can help it. I obviously can't boycott them if it's the only delivery option on an e-commerce website, or if someone, company happens to ship me something via FedEx. But I have literally chosen to pay more on an e-commerce website, to specifically not use FedEx as a shipping service. Reason, when I bought my Pixel 3, the first day it was supposed to arrive, I worked from home that day to sign for my package. They never arrived, and on the tracking, wrote that I wasn't home to receive the package. I was furious, so I spent the next two days working from home, and even did my work in the kitchen, so that I could physically see if any delivery driver actually walks up to my door. Three straight effing days in a row, not a single person comes up. Ring doorbell even doesn't show him walking up, but they have the mother effing audacity to claim I wasn't home three straight days in a row. I ended up having to pick it up at their facility. Just because they lied three times in a row, even after a phone call each day the first two days, the customer service person even told me I probably missed them when I went to the restroom or something, underscore can't even own up to the effing fact that everybody in their company are a bunch of effing liars. So for that reason alone, I pay more for shipping as long as it's not FedEx. I've specifically driven a further distance to get something printed at Staples or Office Depot just so I don't step foot into a FedEx store. Boycotting FedEx until the day I die. This is too late for you but maybe it can help someone else. FedEx did the exact same thing to me but I was able to get my package within a few hours. I work from home and I was expecting my new iPhone, which was rush shipped for early morning delivery. I put a note for the driver on my door that said I was home and to knock. I kept refreshing the tracking info until finally it said a delivery was attempted but I was not home. I called their customer service line and sat on hold for about 45 minutes before reaching a series of people who kept passing me off to someone else. 
Finally, I ended up with a very nice woman who was honest as f with me. Told me she was looking at his location and he scanned the package miles and miles away from my house. She called someone at the local dispatch who was able to get in touch with the driver and have him drive across the city to get my package to me. I left the note on my door just to f with him and yes, he was pissed. Bank of America, f ed me over for $10 back in 1993 on a mistake they made. Never getting my mother fing business again. ETA. What a nice surprise to commiserate with you all on our shared vitriol for BOFA and their ilk. It was maddening to read some of your stories, and a few were just heartbreaking. I am uplifted by the stubborn streak running through this thread and appreciate the hilarious instances of malicious compliance. Many thanks for the awards, such a nice treat. Happy Friday to you all. Except you BOFA, you can eat a bag of syphilitic DKS. When I was really young, like 12 or 13, the very first bank account I ever had was at a local bank. I saved for ages and had maybe $50 averaging in the account. Local bank gets bought by a larger bank. Still no issue with my balance fluctuating on the low end. Finally we end with Bank of America acquiring the bank. I basically lost all my account to fees. My father was incensed and we went in and argued our case for a while. The account was brought over from two banks ago, none had fees and they hadn't told us, etc. No go, so I haven't touched them since. I was boycotting Blockbuster for charging me late fees because they lost the tape I returned in their evening return slot. F those guys they ain't getting my business. You showed them, they only have one store left. I used to live in an apartment next door to a pizza place. Pizza was decent so I went there at least once a week. There was a woman who worked there who usually wasn't the most friendly, but I never really had any issue. I wasn't the chatty type, but I was a regular so I'm pretty sure all the employees recognized me. One time though I walk in and it's her and another employee working there. The woman is in back so I order my usual two slices with the other employee who puts them in the oven, and stand by the counter watching TV to wait. A minute later the woman comes in on the phone and asks me, did you order? And I said, yeah I just got the two slices. For some reason she assumed the other employee hadn't done anything so she puts two more slices in the oven. I wasn't really paying attention so I didn't think anything of it. A minute later the other employee walks back in, takes the two slices she put in for me and boxes them up. That's when the woman realizes what happened, I still didn't realize, and completely loses her poo at underscore me underscore. She starts screaming, why didn't you say your slices were already in? Now I just wasted these and dramatically dumps them in the trash, what's wrong with you? The whole place just goes dead silent and everyone is staring at me. I'm just standing there bewildered and trying to make sense of what just happened, so I just blurt out, sorry, and walk out. As the shock wore off and I replayed the events in my head, realizing I didn't really do anything wrong or at worst was just an honest misunderstanding, I got pretty upset that I got yelled at like a child, especially after being a regular for years. At that moment I decided I'm never stepping foot in that pizza place again, dot and I didn't. I lived next to it for another three years and not once went in or even ordered from it. Lol she was embarrassed she f up so she screamed at the customer. Any normal place she's gone, customer goes home with pizza coupons. Pretty much anything in one of those unskippable YouTube ads. State Farm. Thanks to some whistleblowers, they got busted committing fraud against their customers and the federal government after Hurricane Katrina. They told their claims adjusters to classify damage as flood damage, rather than wind damage, so that they could reject the claim and tell customers to file a federal flood insurance claim. Katrina survivor here, had a 250k policy, had to sue them due to non-payment to only end up with 20k. I hate the insurance industry with a passion. Yeah, the flood insurance thing was just the tip of the iceberg. I'm with you on the insurance hate. State Farm just gets an extra level of hate. Multi-level marketing schemes. They're poo companies that attract poo tea, and sometimes desperate people, and train them on how to profit off of their friends and families. They destroy lives and I refuse to support them. Edit, by the way Reddit is the reason I found out how predatory MLMs are. The anti-MLM community, especially here on Reddit, has done a great job informing people who might otherwise be vulnerable to these schemes on what they really are. Lifetime Fitness. It really pains me to write this, because I really love their gyms. I had a membership at Lifetime on and off through college. 
I went to a very large university with great amenities, so I didn't need the membership during the school year. I tried to cancel at the end of one summer. I was at the gym one day and I asked about cancellation. I was told to come back at a certain time frame the following Wednesday to cancel. I complied. When I showed up the person doing the cancellations wasn't there. I was told to return the following Wednesday. Surprise, surprise, the person wasn't there again. I told them I was going to stop the payment through the credit card company. They responded by telling me that they'd take me to collections then. I ended up escalating through their corporate offices to get the membership cancelled. They managed to get two extra months of fees out of me. After that year of college, I shifted over to LA Fitness, and maintained that membership for about 10 years. When I moved away from LA Fitness, I joined the YMCA, where I've been for the last five to six years. I will always have a gym membership, but I am committed to not joining a lifetime fitness again until I'm reimbursed. It's really a loss for both of us. Edit, thanks for the awards everybody. I can't believe the attention this has received. It seems that many of you have found yourselves in similar situations. I encourage you to check out your local YMCA. YMCAs are unique in that their membership cost structure is designed to subsidize memberships for individuals and families that otherwise could not afford one. They also tend to be active in the community, hosting events like the Special Olympics. Thanks for all the comments, I'll read through them this evening. New York Sports Club said they would pause all accounts, then proceeded to charge me during the pandemic despite locations being mandated closed by the governor. They didn't reply to any of my calls or emails. They're facing a lawsuit over this now. Had to dispute the charge with my bank which refunded me the amount charged in full thank goodness. But I vow that NYSC won't see a dime from me again. I have been boycotting Carnival Cruise Line ever since I found out they are dumping plastic into the Bahamas. They even admitted to it and received a $20 million fine. WTF? That is insane. Sirius XM Radio. If you've ever dealt with the customer service when trying to cancel your subscription, you'll understand why. They went from $12.99 a month to $1.99 a month for six months in a single phone call. Yelp. They are horrible to small businesses and require them to pay a fortune for ads to bury any negative reviews. If the business doesn't spend on ads, they bury the positive reviews. Yelp also seems to attract the worst critics. Edit. Thank you for all the upvotes and awards. Now I know what it feels like to be a rock star on Reddit. I noticed that someone is going through the whole thread and downvoting all the comments against Yelp. Must be a Yelp employee. Same. I had a disgruntled employee post a review four months after I fired him and made it sound like a real review. This was actually really upsetting for me because the whole reason I fired him was because in one 15-minute instance he called a customer a bitch, threatened to break another co-worker's arm, then tried to get into a fist fight, so I had to physically retrain him and literally dragged him by the collar outside the restaurant in the middle of service, locked the door, and then I called the cops. He harassed me for three days sending up to 400 texts a day insulting me, calling me names, threatening to tell his high-powered friends and his lawyer about how he was unjustly fired. I cried for weeks about it because I was legitimately scared. I was 25 and this guy was 43. And then he posted on Yelp, and not only did my bosses not care about it, they just dismissed it as, don't let it get under your skin, like, sir, I was scared for my life but whatever, Yelp just refused to take it down. It's still up to this day, five years later. F Yelp forever. Edited to add, since this post is blowing up, I would love to say that the best thing you can do to counterbalance these horrible reviews is to give five-star reviews to all of your favorite places regularly. Four-star reviews actually hurt more than they help. So go take some time today to leave five-star reviews, ideally on Google, on all of your favorite places, and tell your friends to do the same. It's free and it really helps local businesses. Thank you. Pet Smart. My aunt works there and said she is surprised that every animal in there has not died yet. TBH, stores vary greatly. Some are great and some are terrible. It just depends on the place. There is a really nice PetSmart near me that used to be pretty good, and earlier this year, they started to get better products and a larger variety of items, as well as better care for their animals. There's also another PetSmart that's really small and half the store is covered in boxes and discarded items nobody bothers to clean anything up and it's a pretty awful place. Caskets, headstones, and burial plots. 
when I'm dead, just throw me in the trash. My kids have told me they are donating me to the body farm. I made them promise me that they will wait until I am dead. Facebook. Edit, thanks for the love. Microtransactions in games that are only there to speed up a ridiculously slow progression model. This is my husband's addiction and I literally can't do anything to stop it. He plays every single version of Candy Crush Saga there is. Bubble Witch, Soda Pop, something about adopting dogs, all of them. He's at an astronomical level in them and he feels that he can't stop now because then he'll fall behind in a game where they can literally add and reuse levels at the drop of a hat. He'll spend a few bucks here or there for extra lives or moves when he can't complete a level. He says that it's only a dollar or two and that it is cheaper than buying a normal game but he doesn't see that over the past years he spent hundreds of not thousands on games that he doesn't really even enjoy that are made to literally do just this from him. And at the end of the day there's literally nothing to show for it, he doesn't own anything. EA Sports BC they ruined my favorite video games genre. Edit. Thank you all for the upvotes. Glad I am not the only one who stopped buying their games. I haven't given them a dime since 2017 and not planning on doing so anytime soon. Nestle, pure evil company. On my screen, there is literally an espresso ad right below OP's post before the comments. What the actual F? K-Cups. I think the Keurig is a good product, but the disposable K-Cups are so wasteful. I have a Keurig, but I use a reusable pod that you can put ground coffee into. Edit. This is the reusable pod I use, link. There are probably better options out there, but I bought this one a few years ago from Walmart and it's held up. Walmart. I worked there and hate it with a passion. Ever since an Aldi opened up nearby, me and my wife rarely asterisk ever asterisk have to go to Walmart now. Asterisk so asterisk much cheaper. I wish I could boycott, avoid those stupid Huel adverts with that grinning idiot in the hat. H e e w w thanks h e w w w l l i v more inri erigi thune me twenties so whack. Sasquatch soaps, such annoying ads trying to testosterone shame me into buying your all natural BS or show me a pretty girl in a swimsuit telling me how good it smells. Denny's, I got a side salad with my meal that had a huge sticker on a chunk of lettuce that I discovered when it was in my mouth spat it out and called the waitress over to show her and asked for the manager. The manager comes over to my table and says, what's your problem? Uh, I found this sticker in my salad and it hurt when I bit down on it. That was in your mouth? Gross. What do you want me to do about it? I don't think I should pay for it at a minimum. She snatched the salad away from me and I never saw her again. The waitress brought my check and lo and behold there was a salad on it that I had only tried to eat one sticker cover bite. I protested and she said, the manager thinks you put that sticker on it to get a free meal. F you Denny's. Big sip of coffee. Roach in my mouth. Same thing. Manager came over and then proceeded to tell me that they don't have roaches. Any company or brand that puts advertisements on boat billboards that troll the beach and F up my horizon line. That's not a fair spot to try to capture my attention. Greater than you emerge from the Perez Art Museum Miami to take a bayfront stroll only to be confronted by a jumbo screen advertisement for Sonor Frogs cruising through the water. You were contemplating sculpture. Now you're blinking at 12 foot tall people who are dancing and eating burritos. Your attempt to enjoy a scenic view has been scuttled by a floating billboard. Greater than hoping to escape crass commercialism at the beach. Forget it. Whether you're sitting on the sand or wading in the ocean, it's impossible not to notice the barge chugging back and forth parallel to shore. Its cargo is a 46-foot long, double-sided LED sign displaying a loop of ads for beer, sportswear, nightclubs, cell phones, airlines, TV shows, restaurants and ice cream. Greater than iron jokes aside, the floating billboards aren't going away. In fact, they are so popular with advertisers that Ballyhoo Media, the Miami company that invented the innovative outdoor consumer marketing platform, has plans to expand to new cities and add special events, such as a Miami beachfront screening of Jaws, this summer during Discovery Channel's Shark Week. Just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water. More ads. From in Miami Herald article titled, Floating Billboards Turn Miami Waterfront into Times Square. But are they legal? From 2019. That is depressing. The Oscars. Screw the Oscars. That Hollywood circle jerk has absolutely no business telling anyone what cinema is. 
2017 Boss Baby got nominated for Best Animated Feature, but your name didn't? Excuse me? WTF? Then 30 plus people die in an arson attack on an animation studio in Japan and not so much as a single word during the In Remembrance section. If that happened to Pixar, they would have given them a full on 20 minute segment. The Oscars are just the popular kids from high school having a bigger and fancier prom. Chris Brown. Edit, not just for the Rihanna thing he's been a piece of poo well before and after that. But yes also for the Rihanna thing. F Chris Brown. Everybody likes to think that beating Rihanna was the only awful thing he ever did but it isn't. He's continually shown patterns of abusive and overly aggressive behavior, along with general pettiness, mostly towards women and been arrested multiple times for his actions. Lots of people think he just slapped Rihanna a couple times but he beat the poo out of her. 2008, Chris Brown pleads guilty to felony charges for physically assaulting his girlfriend Rihanna. Her injuries were bad enough that she was sent to the hospital. You can read the police report for details on what happened if you want. Community service, five-year probation and domestic violence counseling are his sentence. 2010, Brown is denied a visa to the UK due to his felony conviction. This will happen in multiple countries in the future and this isn't about his behavior but showing an example of consequences actually happening for his actions at a point in time. 2011, Brown makes an appearance on Good Morning America and during a break he throws a chair through his dressing room and yells at production staff while storming out of the building. 2012, gets into a huge fight at a nightclub in NYC with Drake and other people. Eight people were injured and Brown would release a diss track about Drake just a few weeks later. Bonus, for Halloween he dresses up as an Islamic terrorist. Rihanna is at the same party so he violates the restraining order, but that part seems more accidental. 2013, Brown allegedly assaults and threatens to shoot Frank Ocean in a parking lot and calls him gay slurs. It is also found that he has been faking his community service hours and is sentenced to complete an additional 1,000. He is also arrested for assaulting a man, breaking his nose, outside of a hotel in Washington, D.C. He spends 36 hours in jail for this. He later goes on to be kicked out of rehab for violent behavior, so he goes to an anger management facility for three months instead. 2014. Brown is told to serve 90 days at a Malibu treatment center but is kicked out, violating a court order. So instead he gets sentenced to 131 days in jail, but is released early so long as he agrees to see a psychiatrist twice a week. His court date for punching that man in the face last year comes up and he pleads guilty to misdemeanor charges. 2015, Brown's probation is revoked when it's learned that he left LA without consent from the court. There was also an altercation not involving Chris directly at this event which lead to five people being shot. But it was his birthday party I guess so these are probably his friends. He is charged with misdemeanor battery but those charges are dropped. He is temporarily held in the Philippines after a fraud investigation. He finally finishes all of his community service hours. 2016-2017, there are three separate investigations of assault, violent CD that don't amount to any actual charges, although one did lead to a standoff with a SWAT team at his house after reports of him having a firearm, which he can't own due to his convictions, and he reportedly put videos on Instagram of this incident while it was happening. Model Karush Tran, his GF at the time, is granted a restraining order against Chris Brown citing he was physically abusive towards her and threatened to kill her. Her evidence included voicemails and text messages from the singer. 2018, Brown gets two charges for having a capuchin monkey without the proper permits, he needs to turn over the monkey to a proper facility and pay a $35,000 fine. He is also arrested outside of a nightclub in Tampa for a felony battery charge he caught in 2017 but is released after posting $2,000 an hour later. 2019, he is accused of raping a woman in Paris, but is allowed to leave the country without charges while the investigation is pending. He fails to attend court for the matter and a second court date is set but IDK if that's actually happened yet or not. 2021, a woman claims that Brown slapped her so hard that her weave fell out. There's an investigation happening but who knows if anything will come of it. An additional lawsuit is filed by a former housekeeper of Brown's alleging that one of his dogs attacked her and is seeking monetary compensation for medical expenses, lost wages, etc. It is believed that Brown euthanized the dog after this incident.
Chris Brown has released albums at least every other year throughout his career and has had seven singles peak in the top 10 of the US Billboard charts since 2009. I didn't mean to write a novel. But there's been a lot going on in his life regarding the law and people don't really talk about it. I know he grew up in a bad house and got rich and famous very young and all of that messes with you, but at some point you'd think he would have a year, outside of a pandemic, without some poo going on. He has also recently been diagnosed with bipolar disorder and PTSD and a parole officer believes that lack of treatment and self-medicating has made his behavior more extreme, made his symptoms worse. I'm not a psychologist, just depressed, so I cannot comment on the validity of these diagnoses or the statement of his parole officer. But I think it is important to include that for full transparency. Edits. Thanks all for the awards and the upvotes. This information is pretty easy to find with just a few Google searches but I do love researching. I've gone back to fix some spelling, grammar errors and add details to some things. Johnson & Johnson. Their baby powder gave my sister stage 3 ovarian cancer at 29. She's on her fourth recurrence and just turned 32 and is about to enter hospice. Went from top of her career field in demand all over the country to living with our parents, and me to help care for her, and can't even walk up the stairs without help. F them. Any company that gives off baby innocent soft vibes and loads of green stuff about nature being wonderful. Take a second look. R. Kelly. Kills me I can never hear Ignition Remix ever again. Such a banger. Ruined the Trapped in the Closet saga as well. For shame. After this week, F in Activision and or Blizzard, however that poo is structured. What did they do this time? Copying another reply. Oh boy howdy you're in for a doozy. Link. Also check out the WoW subreddit if you want more context, they're talking about it a lot over there. TLDR, Blizzard has been run like a frat house trope machine. Blatant sexism and racism. Ugly behavior. The state investigated them for two years and found enough evidence to sue. MLMs. I used to try and boycott Amazon. Never ordered anything from them. Didn't go on sites like Goodreads or IMDb. Didn't shop at stores they had shares in. Then I discovered AWS. Tried to run a custom script that would block any site hosted on AWS but that made using the internet nearly impossible. The final nail in the boycott coffin was when I needed to use it for a web development class. Now that Amazon has bought MGM, I'm not sure how anyone will ever be able to participate in society without filling Bezos' pockets. Don't forget how much governments rely on their servers as well. A significant portion of the US government stores a lot of stuff with them and needs them for communication. Autism Speaks. Among other things, the way they treat autism like it's some kind of horrible personality disease is unforgivable. Do you remember those ads they had where they had the parents of autistic children talking about how often they thought of murdering their kids for being autistic, saying that in front of their kids? And we were meant to empathize with the parents and think, gee this is why we need to cure it, so no parent has to constantly fantasize about murdering their child for being neurodivergent. Kat Von D makeup. Even now that she's supposedly not part of it anymore, I'm not risking it. Asterisk asterisk edit to everyone asking why, there are comments that sum it up pretty well, but IMO, she's a trash human being, her husband is a trash human being, she's anti-vax, and yes I saw her, apology, video and denial video, I'm not buying that either. Her makeup line was all I used for a very long time cause the quality was great, but after I found out how poo she actually was, I stopped using it. As far as I know, she sold the brand to another company and the KVD now stands for Kindness, Vegan Beauty, and Discovery. Nestle Nestle around here is a great example of when people fight hard enough, they can win against big companies. I live at the base of what most places would consider small mountains. The Mountainua area is very, very rural with only a few small roads. However, it is utterly beautiful and many come from other states to honeymoon there and also to watch the leaves change in the fall. The tourists are just enough to boost the local economy but also not make it an urban area. Most of the area is protected in some way. But above all, they have the most absolutely delicious water. I know that sounds weird but it's true. Something about the rainfall and the mountains filtering it, don't know. But no one has to filter water up there. It's been tested as very pure and and tastes wonderful to boot. Just enough minerals to give it taste but not enough to make it hard water. Needle found out, took notice, whatever. 
They started plans to make a bottling plant there and started the process to do so. This was done as quietly as possible. Someone made it public and Nestle started a campaign in the area to make people comfortable with it. The surrounding homeowners started fighting. Their main initial concern was traffic. The road simply could not handle it. There is a main highway that runs through the area but to get from the proposed plant to the highway with tractor trailers would be a nightmare. Not to mention they get a lot of snow and ice. Roads are already heavily congested during busy weeks so a stuck tractor trailer would mean no one getting in or out for hours plus the upkeep and exhaust. That held them back for a bit. Nestle submitted proposals to help with traffic problems and showed how increased taxes coming from them would help with upkeep. They also made special concessions to the homeowners about how and when the trucks would be operating, sound barriers, setting access roads back from neighboring properties, etc. It all sounded logical and reasonable. People supporting kept talking about how much money would be brought in. Things D down and Nestle started to move forward. Then the bombshell dropped. Someone got some documents somewhere and some numbers didn't add or match up. Very, very, very long story short, a lot of people had been flat out lying. Nestle was planning to bottle over three times what they were telling the public, which also meant three times the traffic, facilities, three times the workers, also the traffic from them, where they would live etc., and facilities. Additionally, they had bribed several local officials to hide this info. Those officials didn't just hide it, they literally were changing documents to hide it. Official documents. Lawsuits were filed. The homeowners and other affected people all got together to present a united front. They got some good local lawyers who really got the ball rolling. Then some bigger lawyers found out and came to help as severally reduced fees. Mostly pro bono but there are expert, court, outside fees that of course have to be covered. It was amazing because as far as we knew, the local lawyers were leading the charge and the big shots were TKAING a back seat and supporting from their experience. Nestle's defense was that everything was already going forward and too late to change. Also they pointed out initially that the locals agreed. They Aleo brought forth all these industry experts that showed that there would be little to no impact. The locals and the lawyers fought like rabid dogs and poked holes in everything. Showed the initial agreement was based on false numbers. They brought in state experts, not national pit experts to show the real impact. The most damaging was the inevitable reduction of the water table and proved that the water table was not as deep as they were saying and it would put an area into drought that never sees a true drought. It would decimate the area. The people as well as the environment. The expert was well respected and his numbers and conclusions held up under scrutiny. During this, the officials were indicted. One was convicted I think and the other plead guilty. Don't quote me on that one and there were others that got off scot-free but the two that were changing documents and lying publicly did not. Neste lost. They were forced to pack up and leave essentially. It should be said the homeowners were probably listened to a bit more because it is an isolated area and those homeowners and business owners have been there for generations. They know exactly how to build an area for people without impacting the environment sign if I gently and protecting what needs to be protected. Edit. Sorry to all the replies. To answer. This took place in the Pocono Mountains in Pennsylvania. Edit 2. OMG thanks for all the awards. I had no idea our little story would get such a huge response. Orange sticks. Around 10 years old, I ate the whole top layer, 14 sticks I think, and a little while later vomited 5 times in a row. I know it was my fault, but I can't look at him anymore without thinking about that. What is an orange stick, exactly? It's a candy, orange jelly encased in chocolate. Facebook. It divides and dumbs down people, contrary to what it should do. I deleted mine a few years ago and never plan on going back. Just too messy and unproductive. Twitter. YouTube Premium. Thank you for watching. We upload new videos every day, so be sure to come back for more fun. Please consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed the video.